uh, we put the machine, but machine, vacuna, machine, vaccine, 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 yes, and all. Um, today, uh, is um, the milk is is a little bit uh, minus, minus. Oh. Yes. Uh, oh, Luis, is necessary the cows uh, being being pregnant in order to produce a lot of milk? Yes, oh. actually, actually, after they get birth is when they produce the most. Oh. Yeah, it's new when, for me. Yeah. yeah, when new cattle are like um, tiny is when they produce the most. Yes. Okay, so it's interesting as always to log into this room and to hear you guys <laughs> speak in English because you know it's 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 just amazing to have you practicing so yeah um welcome welcome once again so here we are one more time we are um going to be wrapping up our week today and um uh, yeah hopefully we're going to be able to talk about the topics that we have for to for this evening and um i think that for the ones who have been working with me before there's no need for you guys to wonder what question we're gonna have today it's the last day of the week, therefore, the question <laughs> is relatively obvious. Um, now, there's only one thing uh, that I need to know from you guys. And before we get started with the class, I want to know, uh, did you bring the assignment? Trajeron la tarea? Ayer les dejé tarea. Hour? Excuse me? I, 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 hour? No trajeron la tarea. Oh. No. No trajeron no. la tarea. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. pupusas. I told you. It's a Friday. Yes. Uh, a teacher yes, invited us. <laughs> it's a Friday. <laughs> when we have classes on Friday, we have pupusas. Yeah, pupusas. yeah so, and chocolate. Um, oh, no, yeah, that, that would be amazing. Did you did you do the homework, Araceli? Sandra, sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 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 that's my favorite name. Honestly, you know. I, uh -huh. I, I like the <laughs> <laughs> no, I I couldn't what? because I have just reached home, you know. Oh, okay. yeah. So you couldn't do the homework, huh? No, I couldn't. Honestly, I feel like to eat a tacos, teacher, after the class. Me? Me. Oh, Me. you like to eat tacos after the class? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. okay. I don't know if I have ever. I think I have never shared this with any course with any group. Um, but I'm going to do it with you tonight. Uh, and it is the fact that I have a common practice, you know, since I, since I started working with Corporativo, I have this common practice is like, um, something that I enjoy doing. And it is the fact that on the last, the very last day of, um, classes, I buy a box of wings, you know, they can be barbecue, they can be hot wings, any wings. So I bought, I buy a box of wings and also a box of wine so i have wings and wine that's my my uh, my dinner you know when when we reach the last um class so i can go to bed and just um yeah rest so just um, so you guys, wings. i wish i wish they were from <laughs> buffalo because they are just great but buffalo is too far away from my house so oh. i cannot yeah the only buffalo wings that is kind of close to my place is around uh, uh 40 minutes 40 to 45 minutes away yeah. so yeah that's too far so yeah i just buy i just buy wings you know from the supermarket so yeah sello de oro or something like that um box wings just just to, just so you know but yeah that's a practice that's something that i have been doing for almost a year now more than a year so yeah, but on Fridays, it, it actually is the first time that I have pupusas on Friday when we have classes, but it was just that I went for a walk with my sister and I remember, hey, I told them yesterday that uh, we were going to have pupusas this evening and it will be, you know, a nice joke to start with um, the pupusas. So yeah, um, but well, for this evening, we're going to be wrapping up the topic about family. We're going to be talking about um, some of the members of the family that are not nuclear to, um, well, to, to the regular families that we know. We are also um, going to be covering something related to um, past models or model books from the past. Um, and then, well, a topic that is 
going to be really short and it's verbs that go with problems. That is something that we actually uh, were working on last night on the activity at least. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, the wrap for all of it is going to be um, making examples about both of those topics. But before we get there, you know, as I said before, it's a Friday. Well, it's the last day of the week, the last time we're going to see one another before the weekend. So the question is apparent. And the question for tonight is going to be any plans, any special occasions coming up this weekend? And I'm going to start by asking Julia, because I didn't ask you yesterday. So tell me, Julia, do you have any plans for this weekend? Uh, well, I do have plans. I uh, want to go to Cojutepeque mm. to visit my my boyfriend's family. And I also want to organize the things that I have in my bedroom that I have. That I haven't had time to do it. Okay. Has it has but, it been windy where you live? No. 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 It it, it has been hot a lot. Oh, okay. And uh, I really want to rest because this was a a, a really hard week mm -hmm. because of the traffic. I live in Soyapango, and to uh, get to my work, mm -hmm. uh, I had to draw to to drive like two hours and a half every day That's and scary. i really want to rest <laughs> yeah i can only imagine it is very yeah. tough yeah in my case you know to get to work i only have to go um what like two minutes from my bedroom to my kitchen <laughs> so yeah it's not too far <laughs> no but i can only imagine i have seen the news and i have seen how terrible it is right now in, in some areas in the central section of our country. I don't recommend you to come to say a pango. <laughs> I have been there a few times, you know. Actually, there is a nice news um, or a nice story about that. On January the, the 8th, I think it was, I was driving through Soya because I had to get to San Martin. And I wanted to take the road through um, Ilopango, but it was just a mess. You know, taking that road through uh, Soya to Ilopango, that was just horrible. So I decided to go downtown Soyapango and take the Panamericana. But the Panamericana was even worse because I didn't know they were fixing one of the, um, one of the, of the, of the, ah, what you call it? Well, they were fixing the road, you know. So only one lane was open, one lane. They were uh, fixing one of the lanes. Okay. Um, so, yeah. It was very bad, very, very bad. I, I remember that day I was very tired. And as soon as I got out of, tra out of the traffic, I started speeding the car up because I just needed, you know, to, to drive a little bit um, fast because, yeah, it is, it is very bad. I cannot imagine myself having to go through that every day. So, yeah, you deserve very much to rest this weekend. Okay, um, how about... Um, the case for, oh, wait, let me see. Roberto says, um, okay, thank you, Roberto. I was actually about to ask you, you know, actually, I was actually about to ask you. How about you, Sandra? Any plans, any special occasions coming up this weekend? Oh, yes. Uh, this weekend, we have uh, a conference for, um, for couples in, at the church. Mm -hmm. And then um, next Friday, uh, Sunday, Mm -hmm. um, I will teach my my uh, my children at church. Okay, nice. And yes. is the meeting for couples who are about to get married or for um, couples that are already married? About getting married. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, of course. I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I I am asking. I'm I'm just wondering. You know, just asking around, seeing how the process goes. Um, so yeah <laughs> okay okay thank you okay so i hope everything i hope everything goes amazing you know with your meeting and also with the class for um for the kids on sunday oh yes thank you very much okay you're very welcome um okay. how about amilcar any plans for this weekend amilcar okay teachers good evening good evening 
everybody. Uh, and really, uh, actually, uh, uh, we are thinking to go. Uh, <laughs> there are the place that we when I go with my wife. Uh, the first is <laughs> the church. Okay. And the second, uh, go to the Congo. Mm. And the third place is uh, go to visit uh, Parque Saburo Irao. Okay. Because uh, uh, because the people the the people say that the the park it, it has uh, uh, more or less uh, 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 one hundred sixty years to exist. Wow, I see. Really, um, it's very, very, very ancient. Important, very important. Yeah, <laughs> that very the nice. it has uh, a lot of time. So we are thinking where we gonna go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. I hope you make the best decision. You know, at the end of the day, any decision that takes you to where you are going to be happy is going to be the correct one. So. Nice. Sounds like a like an like an important decision to make, and also like the big the weekend is gonna go great either or uh, other way. So very good, okay, very very good. nice. Okay. Um, how about um Walter? Any plans for this weekend, Walter? Uh, no specific plan, but I thinking about about day with my wife in the. Uh, February 14. Mm -hmm. Before yeah, I, before Bali my hamster my hamster running I get on over and over and over. Uh -huh. What what can I do? Uh huh. But tomorrow uh, as told you before, I have a little business uh, about typical food. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow probably I I'm going to the uh, to buy some groceries in order to prepare of the material to produce a, a typical food. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Sunday, I'm going to the church and redeem all my zines. <laughs> okay, yeah, we yeah. have to try at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least we gotta try. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, well, on the case of what to do with your wife, you know, me and my girlfriend, we are very weird about Valentine's because we almost yeah. never celebrate Valentine's. <laughs> Our plan is to go. Uh, for Mexican tortas that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get tortas and we might go to the gas station to have a drink or two and just that that's our plan you know I was planning on making dinner I t I asked her if she wanted um something like a pasta that's one of my uh, my top um dishes but she said no she said like I I'd rather spend time with you and may better we cook you know in another day uh, and we just spend some time together. So yeah, that's how we roll. We don't complicate things. So, you know, you can do something like that. Yeah. Uh, even teacher, even though teacher, uh, today I receive uh, uh, some offers about Banco Agricola, mm -hmm. where and and give me uh, a loan. Thirty five, no, thirty five or forty or forty forty discount if I go to the. Uh, Pampa Argentina. Oh. Yeah, but I think um, um, wow. um, I'm going to the Pampa Argentina from uh, Cuarepeque Lake. Yeah, that uh, would be a good option. I, I think about yeah, next, that would, to, uh, next to Congo. Yeah, that would be a great <laughs> yeah. option. You know, yeah. maybe you guys yeah. can get to yeah. meet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, it sounds like a nice option. Um, in my case, yeah. I'm just not the type of guy who likes to go um to dinners around this time. I'd rather take her on dinner on a dinner, you know, in a in a less crowded time. Uh, but yeah, it sounds uh, like a good deal, you know, going to um to one of those restaurants. La Pampa here in San Miguel, I just got to share this with you guys. La Pampa here in San Miguel is not that good, just to be honest. I have tried La Pampa in San Salvador and other places, and it's better. But here in San Miguel, they don't serve their best. Um, but still, I have heard it is an amazing restaurant. I have tried it a couple of times, and uh, it will be a nice option as well. 
And if you go to Coatepeque, you can have, you know, a little picnic or something. So yeah, would be a good option. Okay, very good. Um, how about uh, the last person I'm gonna ask for plans is gonna be Jacqueline. So tell me, Jacqueline, any special plans this weekend? Well, teacher, um, I have to wash my clothes, teacher. It's my only plan. Okay. <laughs> and good. rest, maybe. So you're going to the volcano? No, teacher. You, you're not going to the volcano? You are. Sí, va a ir al no. volcán, ¿sí o no? Los que entendieron, ma, va a ir al volcán, no. Jacqueline. Al volcán de ropa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Al <laughs> <The> volcano. <laughs> yeah. Yo, bien segura, Yo, no. Yo no. No, <laughs> Aquí así decimos aquí en la casa. ¿Qué va a hacer este fin? Ah, tengo que ir al volcán. Al de ropa sucia que tengo. Ok, nice. So, in my case, if I'm allowed to share uh, what I'm going to do, well, one of the first things is a parent. I have to get a haircut. So, yeah, I'm going to um, get a haircut. Then, um, tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to church. And on Sunday, I think I shared this with you before, but on Sunday, I'm starting a new, a new course. So, I'm going to be learning about air conditioning. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. On Sunday afternoon, um, I start, you know, new classes. And... Um, Basically, that's it. That's my weekend. So hopefully it goes well for all of us. All right. So now let's get started. Um, the other day, we had a chance to look at this only for a little bit, but we didn't get to talk about it that much. Um, so this is, you know, the most common um, family tree, the most common names are actually here. Some of the ones that people tend to get confused with are going to be probably nephew and niece. Those are the two ones that are kind of tricky sometimes. Um, but still, these are the most common ones. The ones that don't appear here are going to be um, grand uh, grandchildren. Those are the ones that are not um, here because they were not also visible on the, on the picture. And one rule that we have is that we cannot use pictures from other sources. So I cannot show you guys other pictures because if, we, if I do and if the picture is copyrighted, um, I can get into trouble. So I can only show you this one. Um, but yeah, the ones that are not shown are going to be um, granddaughters, grandsons, something like that. But um, the rest are all available here. So from these family members. I think you guys may happen to know all of them. The other day, I remember that I mentioned, for example, um, that the in-laws or the family in-law are the ones that are related to you, but only through your family. For example, um, the wife of your brother is going to be your sister, but your sister-in-law. Now, um, your wife is, of course, going to have a family. So all the family from your wife is also going to be your in-law or i mean we normally refer to them as the in-laws so if you ever wonder how you can refer to um, la familia politica in english you're gonna have to say my in-laws or maybe if you're going to talk about somebody else's in-laws you're gonna have to say something like that let's say um, my son's in-laws all right my son's in-laws my neighbor's in-laws so any um political or family that has been joined um, through another member of the family are going to be in-laws. All right. So um, aunts, uncles, I think it's very common. Um, one of the words that sometimes tends to, to create trouble is going to be the one that refers to us talking about brothers and sisters. Because, for example, you are never supposed to say, my brother's if you're going to be talking about a mixed group of siblings, okay? So if you have two brothers, it means that both of them are males. You go, you can safely say my brothers. If you have two sisters and both of them or all of them are females, you can say my sisters. But if you have a mixed group, if you have <sighs> brothers and sisters, then you will have to say siblings, all right? So that is the word we're going to be using. Anytime we're talking about our brothers and sisters, um, in movies, this is something very important. In movies, 
mostly when movies, when, when we're talking about religious movies, we're going to hear the people say, my brothers and sisters, but they do that because they want to be more dramatic, okay? So if you like, for example, the X-Men movies, if you ever hear Magneto um, giving a speech, he's, he's going to say, um, he's going to say um, my brothers and sisters, because he's trying to relate to them in a closer uh, manner and also because he's trying to be more dramatic. So that's the, the reason why sometimes people say my brothers or sisters. Also at church, when you are at church, um, the priest, the pastor, the, the person who, the leader of the church is not going to say my siblings. Okay, because siblings are only the ones related to you either by blood or by law. Um, so he is going to say my brothers and sisters. Okay, so, but that is because um instead of i mean he's trying to say hermanos right so he's gonna say my brothers and sisters instead instead of saying my siblings because you're not actually uh related to him by blood or law not at this time so yeah uh now moving on we have these other members of the family for example we have father-in-law that was not shown there so if you want to talk about your suegro or um, your suegra, you will have to say father-in-law or mother-in-law. Um, as I said before, ahora, importantísimo es que cuando hablamos de los in-laws, siempre que nos referimos a los in-laws, vamos a estar hablando principalmente acerca de las personas más cercanas. ¿sí? No vamos a, a extendernos hasta cousin-in-law, sino que brother-in-law, sister-in-law, hasta ahí se queda, ¿verdad? Um, Something that is also a common practice in, this, in the U.S. is that um, your father-in-law and your mother-in-law are always going to call you son if you are a, a man and daughter if you are a woman. Okay, so they are not going to call you son-in-law and, um, and daughter-in-law because it sounds a little bit weird. And also it is expected from you to, to call them mom and dad. So that is something that happens a lot. So uh, as, as when you get married um, in the U.S., you're going to see people calling, you know, their in-laws mother or, or, or not mother, mom, mom or dad. So Excuse that's me, another... teacher. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the extended family is the same that uh, when we say uh, a big family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It will be basically the same. Okay, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ok, entonces les decía, ¿verdad? Para que quede más, 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 más claro. Um, cuando uh, se casan, o sea, o si ustedes lo ven en alguna película o algo así, no se vayan a asustar. Cuando las personas se casan en Estados Unidos, eh, en la cultura de ellos está que se refieren, ¿verdad? Los suegros eh, llaman a, al esposo de sus hijos como hijo o hija, dependiendo de, del género. Y ustedes, o sea... Quienes se han casado, digamos, en el caso específico con la hija de los señores, le van a decir um, algo así como ma y pa. No le van a decir mother and father, ¿verdad? Sino solo como mom and dad. Sí, o sea, eso significa casi como decir ma y pa. Eh, cuando hablan con ellos, claro. No van a en público decirle my mom. No, en público sí podemos. O sea, cuando hablamos con otras personas, claro, ¿verdad? Podemos decir uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. Pero cuando nos referimos a ellos directamente... Uh, podemos decir así. Now, if you are asking, for example, if you have a friend in the U.S. and you're asking this friend about, let's say, his father-in-law, so you're going to have to say, how is your father-in-law? You're not going to ask him for your dad because his dad is his biological dad. Um, it is tricky. I know. I understand. But, you know, it's something that happens in uh, the American culture. Okay. Uh, then, when you talk about a partner, This is when people are not joined um, by, you know, an official document, when people just live together, but they're in kind of like an open relationship. Um, they're going to refer to them as partners. Now, other people also refer to, um, you know, their wives or their um, husbands as partners, but a partner will be more like people who are in an open relationship. All right, then we have a fiancé. Both of these words are pronounced the same way, okay? Both of them sound the same. 
Yes. You're not going to say fiancé or anything like that. Both of them are fiancé. This oh. is only if you want if we want to be classic. And as we are very classy here, we are going to go that way. So, the first one. Yeah, fiance, that's French teacher. Um, that's yep, French? Yep, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Remember, I think, no me acuerdo si fue con ustedes, cuando, que les conté, o sea, que el inglés es una mezcla, es como si ustedes cuando hacen una salsa, tiran, ¿verdad? Tomates, cebolla, chiles, y un montón de cosas, <risa> relajo en el licuador y le dan prender. Y ese, es el, y ese es el inglés. <risa> ok, entonces, we have fiance, both of those words are going to refer to, what is the meaning of fiance, Sandra? Eh, in, novio, in eh, eh, fiancé, eh, fiancé con, con solo una E es, es novio, pero con las dos E es novia. Novia. Ahora, en inglés o en la interpretación que le dieron ellos, será prometido y prometida. Sí, oh. esa es la interpretación que ellos le dan, ¿verdad? So, y exactamente, así como usted lo dijo, el que solamente tiene una E es el que se utiliza para el masculino y el que tiene dos E se utilizará para el femenino. Entonces, pero en el sonido... Es lo mismo, fiance, sí. Um, but the difference is just um, to identify, you know, one is for, uh, for women and another one is for men. Now, just to make it clear once again, this is not common nowadays, okay? And in this era, the most common thing you're going to see is this word, okay? You, it is very, very weird that people um, type or write uh, this word, fiance for women with double E. Okay, it's not common. So nowadays, the most common one that you're going to see is this one. Okay, then we have a godfather and godmother. These are going to be the ones that we know as um, padrino and madrina. Okay, so godfather and godmother. And then we have the steps. A steps is a um, tricky topic, but it is something that happens very often nowadays as well. In the past, it was not too common to see this in families, but mm -hmm. it is also something that has become very, very common. So stepmother is going to be the same. Uh, well, it's going to be the person who is uh, with living with your dad, but it's not your mother. Okay. So like mm -hmm. a madrastra. And a stepfather is going to be the person who is living with your dad, but it's not um, your, your father. Sorry, with your mom, and it's not your father. So that would be a padrastro. And then same thing if you have a step, uh, um, a step, a step uh, brother and a step sister will be hermanastra and hermanastro. And the step siblings are, um, well, all of the brothers and sisters that come with that relationship. So yeah, steps are going to be another um, part, you know, of the, um, how can we call it? The new family the new era family. So yeah, this is uh, part of the extended family. I don't know, any questions you guys may have, any member of the family that I haven't included? Algún miembro de la familia que se me haya olvidado que ustedes quisieran saber cómo se dice? Teacher, yes. when the couple live without got married. How yeah, that's when, that? you, that's when you use partner. Partner, oh. Partner, yeah, we're partners in life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. when you use partner. So you're gonna be um your um your partner. What is the uh, meaning in Spanish? Step siblings? Step siblings sería hermanastros. O sea, lo puse así porque ahí en lugar de poner step step sister and step brother de una vez. Y lo mismo. Si vamos a hablar de hijastro y hijastra, será verdad step daughter, step son. Perdón, Sandra, what are you gonna say? Yes, when when there is uh, um, wow. Well. Uh, the, the woman has her children, the, the man has his children, and, uh, but, the, but they has one in common. And how we could call those, those uh, boys and girls? The one that they have in common is going yeah. to call the rest a step. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. The one that they have in common is going to call the rest brothers and sisters. Okay, the um, one they have in common. Oh yeah. The ones who yeah. are apart from the from the previous relationship, those are yes. gonna be a steps. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So the kid in the middle, the kid who is part of the of the couple, that's yeah. gonna be brother from all of them. But the oh. ones who are, you know, like the branches of the couple, uh -huh. those are gonna be a steps. 
Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're very sure. welcome. Yes. How do you say cuñado or cuñada in, in English? It would be uh, sister-in-law for cuñada and brother-in-law for uh, for cuñado. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, you, as I mentioned before, you're not going to have, for example, cousins-in-law, anything like that. If you want to call cousin, one of your, your um, spouse's cousins, you can say my cousin. O sea, si ustedes le quieren okay. decir primo, ¿verdad? Al primo de su esposa, simplemente le dicen primo. No le dicen cousin-in-law, okay. sino que primo. And, and that, that gives. So, yeah. Uh, now, another one, another of the, of the things that I think I missed is when you're going to get married because in english you have a specific uh, noun when you're about to to get married have you ever heard about that the day you're going to get married you are referred to as a different thing for example for the male is groom groom okay. and for the women do you know what is the name that women are given when they're going to get married bride me. bride yes uh -huh. Bride and groom. Ok, entonces, el día que ustedes se van a casar, cuando ustedes hablan, ¿verdad? Del novio, bueno, eso, eso no lo incluí, ahora que me acuerdo. Este, eh, pero el novio y yeah. la novia, ¿verdad? O sea, like girlfriend and boyfriend. That is the regular thing, the regular way. When they are in a relationship, they're referred to as uh, girlfriend or boyfriend. But the day they get married, and that day only, they are referred to as bride and groom. So the groom is going to be el novio and bride is going to be la novia. So yeah, that's uh, something special that happens only on that day. El día que se casan nada más, se les conoce así. Okay, um, ahora, pareja. Eh, o oh, bueno, las diferentes formas de referirse, ¿verdad? A la pareja. O sea, cuando ustedes ya están casados, will be, for example, couple. This one is a very common one. We also have spouse. Wait. Spouse. Is spouse. Spouse. Yeah, spouse. spouse. Um, so yeah, couple and spouse. I think this is the proper one. Uh, let me see. Is there spouse? Uh, a husband? Yes, there we go. So that's the one. Um, so yeah, couple, spouse, or some people can tend to say also a partner. Partner. But uh, yeah, this is not like the most common, the most appropriate one. But couple or spouse will be the one. You know, you can say my spouse or my couple. Now, if um, you are in an open relationship, como preguntaba antes, Walter, cuando están en relaciones así un poco abiertas, también pueden decir couple. Sí, mi pareja. Entonces también se puede decir, pero la forma más común es my partner. Pero también pueden decir my couple. Eso lo hacen las personas como para mostrar como el cariño que tienen, ¿verdad? Con la persona. Y they can say couple, my couple. Uh, okay, so any other question? ¿Alguna otra que se nos quede? Porque el, el tema de la familia, pues, es complicado a veces también, ¿verdad? Um, it's true, but sometimes when people say, he is my couple, mm -hmm. uh, it's because they are living together without being married, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That's what I just I just mentioned um, to Walter, or clarified to Walter, that sometimes, you know, when people want to to express that they have a, a very romantic relationship without being married, they say, mm -hmm. yeah, my couple is this, my couple is that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they refer to um, to their partner as couple. However, um, the proper time when you can call someone your couple is when you're married. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. The proper time is when you're married. Now, mm -hmm. a spouse is not supposed to be used if you're not married okay so spouse is only or um only used when you're actually married okay mm -hmm. and then uh fiance of course i think you guys know this that fiance is a uh, state of being when you are um uh you know promised. Boyfriend, yeah. yeah it's before you get married but it's a time when you're promised to the other person so oh. you're not uh, married but you are in a nowadays engaged. okay nowadays yeah engaged nowadays in the in the u.s it is very common that fiances live together okay very very common people give you know they take some time before they get married to live together to experience life together uh, but they're not yet a couple they're not yet um husband and wife they are just fiances 
So that yep. happens very often in this era as well. So yeah, many couples actually, or many, many people go from being boyfriend and, and girlfriend quickly to becoming fiancés just because they want to experience life. And then they break out, break up. Yeah, break up. So yeah, that happens very often um, because they just find out that they don't work together and before they get married and then they have to divorce and all that. Um, yeah. Ah, esa se me olvidaba. Eh, los exes. Sí, también, ¿verdad? O sea, you can say ex-wife and ex-husband. Sí, ex-wife and ex-husband. So yeah, los exes, o sea, también es algo de la, la nueva era, ¿verdad? La nueva familia. It's very, very common. Okay. Uh, well, so I think that's it. I think those are, you know, the most common things that we have to know about the family. Um, but before we let this topic go, any other how, any questions? Any how other? do you? Mm -hmm. See, teacher, um, how do you say in, in English, familia política? In laws. Only yes, in so, laws. Sí, solo in laws. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Laws family. In laws. Solamente in laws. No, no, no hay necesidad de decir family. Solamente con decir in laws. In laws. In laws. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> me tardé tanto que se me fue. <laughs> Por estar disculpando, me se me fue. Okay. Yeah. Only in laws. That's all you, you can say about your um, political. I mean, in books and in some studies, people can say politic family. In science, for example, in sociology, you're going to read the politic family, okay? The same as we have it in Spanish, familia politica. But uh, when you're having a conversation, when you're talking to people, you're going to sound too, um, too much of a show off, okay? O sea, como si se la están picando, if you say politic family. So the best thing you can do is just call them in loss and just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, uh, Luis? No, no, no. no. Ah, okay. okay. Very good. All right. So now, moving on, we go to past modals. So last night we worked on the activity refer uh, related to this topic, and tonight we're going to actually hear how the topic is supposed to be used. So past modals and phrasal modals of obligation. Now, if you guys remember, modals are normally used in a specific situations to give advice, to talk about obligations and possibilities, and uh, to refer to, um, to permission. So those are the most common things that we're going to use modals for. But now we have also the way we are going to be using modals in the past. How and why are we supposed to be using modals in the past? Well, there are things that we were supposed to do things that we are supposed to do that we didn't do therefore we need a way to explain why we didn't do it uh why did we do it so that's when we're going to be having to use models in the past so here we go for example uh let's say that you had a good idea but you didn't carry out that idea what word do you have to use well you're going to have to use this phrasal model that is should have okay so i should have um let's say that you wanted to go to a game like in my case um for tomorrow alianza and aguila are playing here in san miguel and i was thinking i want to go because i have never seen aguila win against alianza okay so i was thinking i will i would like to go but then i decided nah I better go to church because on Sunday I'm going to be tired and I want to rest. So I better go to church. But what if, what if tomorrow Aguila has the best game ever and they win against Alianza 7 to 0? Then maybe on Monday I will say I should have gone to that game. Okay, so because it was something, just tell me, Walter. It's like a regret. When you yes. use a model in past. Exactly. So it ah, was a okay. good idea, but I didn't do it. Okay. So it was a good idea, but I didn't. I didn't listen to myself. I didn't listen to my mind. And I didn't do the thing that I wanted to do. So I may say, I should have gone. Yeah. And in this case, for example, I should have studied 
Uh, sorry, I should have stayed home and studied. I should have stayed home and studied. When in the, is this person thinking of this? Maybe after he or she failed on a test. So he or she just failed a test and now they're thinking, I should have stayed home and studied. Maybe because they made the wrong decision, you know? So what happens, for example, um, um, if, if I, or wait, like my plan for tomorrow is going to church, right? So I go to church, but there is a problem at the stadium tomorrow. Yeah. But in my case, I had the plan that I wanted to go. Now I say, I was supposed to, yeah, I was supposed to be there, but I wasn't. Okay, so this is another thing. Supposed to is when you were required to do something, but you didn't do it either. So um, when you're supposed to do something, like, for example, you guys are supposed to take care of your children, the ones who have them already. But if you don't take care of them, maybe in the future, your children are not going to be as thankful with you. Therefore, you're going to have failed on your obligation. And that's the, 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 the thing here should have is less important than was supposed to okay because should have is something that you wanted to do but supposed to is something that you have to do it's like an obligation as i as i was as i have been trying to say from the very beginning so supposed to is something that is an obligation should have is something that yeah just wanted to was a good idea was something i wanted to do but it was not necessary now same thing here i had to all right, I had to. And this also brings me, I have so many um, memories from movies. This brings me to one scene from um, Avengers, the, the last Avengers, where, um, or, no, it was Infinity War, actually, where um, Thanos says this exact phrase, I had to, okay, in English, he says that, I had to. So when somebody he says, I had to do something. I had to anything. It means that they were forced to do this. Okay. Maybe not forced with a gun. Maybe not forced by their parents, but forced from an outside source. Okay. Maybe because your friends were going to, um, to have a party, but you knew that your dad was going to get mad if you arrived home a little bit late. Um, but your friends were calling you chicken because you didn't want to go to the party because you knew you were going to get in trouble. And then you decided, well, I'll go because if I don't go, I'm going to be bullied for the rest of my school year. Um, so then you say, I had to. It was like I was, I was forced. I was in, in an obligation to do that thing. It's not something I wanted to do, but I had to do it. Um, or when you disciplined your kids, you know, it happens. I think to every parent, it has happened at least once when your kid makes a mistake. And even if you love your kid so much, you have to discipline him or her. Because if not, this kid might grow to become a not so good of a person. Therefore, even if you don't like to discipline your kid, you have to. So you say, I had to. Okay. I had to discipline you because I love you and because I want you to grow as an honest and good person. Okay, so that is something, that is a, a phrasal model that we use when we're referring to things that we didn't, we didn't enjoy, we didn't like, but we had to do, we were enforced um, to do. Now, the next one is, I didn't have to. I didn't have to. And this one is when there is no obligation. Okay, so it's the contrary, of course. I didn't have to go with my friends, but I did. So if let's say, for example, um, your friends planned the party, the same party we were just talking about. So they planned the party, but they knew that you were not going to get the permission. But at the end, you were so brave. You were so, so you that you said, eh, that doesn't matter. I'll go. So you go. Yeah. Tell me, Joaquin. Yes, teacher. Um, are you going to share the, this presentation at the end of this course. I will have to do it tonight. Voy a empezar con compartirlas hoy porque si me espero hasta el final se me va a olvidar. 
So yeah, oh. I'll start with this with this ones, and then next Friday remind remind me again, and I'll send you the new ones that I have for next Friday. Okay, thank you very much. You're Teacher, welcome. Yes. A question. A question. Uh, the topic is past models. Mm -hmm. I think the the unique the unique uh, model in this case is true. Sure. I think it, uh, the structure, grammatical structure, is the modal plus half plus past participle, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Even though I can use uh, may, I can use most, I can use aura, or auto, I don't want to say. Aura, yeah. yeah. Aura. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. It's the same structure. Basically the same. However, the, the thing is that those other ones, yeah. are designed for present uh, occasions. Ah, mm -hmm. ah, okay. That is the only okay. thing. Because, for example, okay. might and ought don't have yeah. a, a past form. They don't have use in the past. Yeah. For example, some people, and that is the debate, because some people say that could is the past of can, but not yeah. necessarily, because they're yeah. uh, different. In terms of, yeah. like, their, their, their use, they are different. Um, so, yeah. Okay. But could, for example, could is used in the past when you're yeah. talking about um, abilities that you used to have. You used could, you know, when I was a, when I was little, I could um, climb a tree in five minutes. But now, yeah. you know, with all these back pain and all these issues <laughs> and, and the, re the fact that I'm heavier now, I cannot. So people think that that makes could the past of can, but not mm -hmm. necessarily. And uh, yeah, the thing is that those, terms, those models that we know and, and use in the present are designed for present occasions. And this mm -hmm. one's right here. The most common one here, of course, is going to be have to. Mm -hmm. um, so these ones are designed for the past. So they are designed okay. to, to, to express um, past situations. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So now we have didn't have to. Didn't have to is used when, as I was saying, there is no obligation. Um, now, the last one is, I thought I needed to, uh, or maybe just needed to, yeah, mm -hmm. needed to. So it's uh, when you thought this was necessary, okay? So, uh, como en matemáticas, the same as in math, this is part of the equation, okay? The fact that you say, I thought, is always going to be required. For you to have the proper use of uh, this model, you always have to say, I thought I needed to. Okay, so I thought I needed to. What can change is from this point on. I thought I needed to buy uh, the PS5, but now I'm just $600 poorer. Okay, I didn't, I don't, I don't have the PS4. Um, it's just an example. So I thought I needed to, um, to get new clothes, but I was just good with what I had, you know? So it was something that I thought was necessary, but in the long run, maybe it has proven to not uh, be the best idea. So that is when we're going to be using, I thought I needed to. Okay, so I thought I needed to. So the ones we have is, I should have, I should have, and this one is when uh, we had a good idea, but we didn't do it in the end. I was supposed to is used when we are required to do something, but we don't do it at the end. I had to is when we do things, but we don't do it on our own will. And then I didn't have to, or didn't have to, is when there is no obligation of doing things, but we do it anyway. Uh, and then we have needed to, or I thought I needed to. And this one is when we think that something is necessary for us to feel okay. Now, um, any questions you guys may have about this? Because if not, I'm going to be asking for examples in a minute. So have a good look at them. See, ¿Sí? veanlos bien y vean cómo se usan. Así que en un momento les pido um, some examples. So any questions before we go to examples? I think, teacher, it's an interesting topic because uh, it's necessary to deep study about the, 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 the complete models. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yeah. The whole use of, of models, how we were supposed yeah. to use them in the present yeah. and how we use them in the past. And the other reason why I consider this topic to be important is because um, this helps us to give excuses. You know, <laughs> we are very good at that. We are very good at, at, at um, giving excuses. So, yeah, 
this topic also helps us a lot um, to, um, to do that. Okay, so let's go to the examples. I'm going to be requesting from you. Uh, we're going to say this one first. I should have. Then the next one is, uh, I was supposed to. So I'm going to type it down just so it's easier. I was supposed to. Um, then we have, I had to. Then we have, I didn't have to. It was okay there. Okay, so I didn't have to. And then I thought I needed to. Ah, come on. I needed to. All right. So examples. Let's see who comes up with the best of them. Um, I should have. Uh, tell me, who has an example that follows the uh, structure of I should have? Think about it. Maybe something like uh, I should have learned to play a musical instrument. Something like that. Oh, I should have. Also, Miss, also, Mr. Segovia, it could be I should have worked up these years or make an exercise. Uh huh. I In should have. Worked out, uh -huh. worked out uh, the last few years. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. this can <laughs> also become a compound sentence, you know, because from here, you can take it into becoming a compound sentence. You can say, I should have worked out the last, this, uh, sorry, the la yeah, the last few years. Uh, and then you could say something like, uh, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, feel as heavy, you know? So I should have worked out uh, the last few years so I wouldn't feel as heavy, see? O sea, debería haber ejercitado los últimos años, así no me sentiría tan pesado. Okay, Walter, what are you gonna say? Okay, I should have paid my bill yesterday instead of, instead of go out with my friends. I should have paid my bill, sorry, bill, yesterday instead of uh, going with my friends, going mm -hmm. out with my friends. There you go. Good example as well. I should have paid my bill yesterday instead of going out with my friends. And it makes it even worse if we say bills because, bill, you know, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bills. I should have paid my bills yesterday. Yeah instead of going out with my friends. And that will um, give us the idea that, yeah, you have spent your money. So now you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Okay, how about this one? I was supposed to, I was supposed to. Who can come up with a good example for this one? I was supposed to. I was supposed to um, deliver this book or, well, no, let's say, Let's go with the proper way. Hand back. Hand uh, back this book by yesterday. So we're following the same idea of yesterday. So I was supposed to hand back this book by yesterday, but I didn't. You know, I had the responsibility. It was something, uh, sorry, hand it back. I was supposed to, you know, no, hand back, hand back. I was supposed to hand back this book yes, by yesterday. Uh, Joaquin, what are you going to say? Yes, um, and I have to, to cook um, in December, last December. <laughs> okay, I had to cook, cook the whole... Cooked. I had to cook the Cooked. whole of last December. Sería solo had to, uh, aquí solo sería cook, sí, porque este, recuerden que este nos, nos permite, ¿verdad? Que el siguiente ya sea en su forma base, sí, okay. entonces aquí ya es un infinitivo básicamente, así que uh, en este se queda el pasado, aquí okay. básicamente termina nuestro pasado, sí, sí, que sería I had to cook the whole of last December, sí, o sea, yes. básicamente aquí cuando decimos esto, eso es importante, miren, um, si yo solo dijese, sí, 
I had to cook así. I had to cook last December. Eso significa que yo lo hice, o sea, sí, tuve que hacerlo, sí, o sea, tuve como la necesidad de hacerlo, pero eh, la interpretación de la misma sería que yo lo hice con gusto, sí, o sea, que no lo hice como tan de mala gana. Pero yo sí digo, I had to cook the whole of last December, el decir the whole, sí, siempre, por ejemplo, si en algún caso ustedes se pelean con alguien, ¿verdad? Y esta persona, digamos que los ha hecho esperar un gran rato. Uh -huh. Entonces, uh, ustedes le pueden decir, I had to wait for you for a whole hour. El usar uh -huh. esa palabra, whole, incluye o incrementa eh, el nivel de drama, por decir así, que hacemos y además como la molestia que tenemos. Sí. So I had to cook the whole of last December. Significa que tuve que, tuve que cocinar todo el diciembre pasado. O sea, uh -huh. como si me estoy quejando. No estoy diciendo que usted lo hace, sino que simplemente aproveché la oportunidad para ponerlo así, ¿verdad? Un poquito más dramático. Yes. Um, same with as, as, as the example that I, I was um, trying to represent. I had to wait for you for a whole hour. Sí, o sea, tuve que esperarte por toda una hora. Yes, o sea, yes. diferentes ustedes dijeron, I had to wait for you for an hour. Yes. O sea, yes. si es cierto, estamos casi como que diciendo, ¿verdad? me vi obligado a esperarte por una hora, pero no están diciendo por toda una hora. En, en cambio, el decir ya es the whole, sí. Um, o si no, digamos, you can say, I was bored the whole while. Sí, o sea, eh, let's say that um, you went out with your friends and maybe they were trying to introduce you to somebody new in, in their life and uh, you just want to be childish about it and you say, yeah, I was bored the whole hour. Entonces están quejando diciéndole, no, yo estaba, estuve aburrido toda la hora. O sea, todo el rato estuve aburrido. Mm -hmm. Así que using the whole in things like this is going to um, increase, you know, the, the meaning of the, of the sentence in a very, very dramatic way. All right. Uh, didn't have to. Any ideas on didn't have to? Me, teacher? Yes. Tell me, Daniel. Okay. Um, I didn't have to explain anymore. Okay. I didn't have to explain anymore. I didn't have to explain anymore. Very compact sentence. Very good. I didn't have to explain anymore. So you said, I yes, yes, yes. I didn't have to have my sister's family, but I was glad to. I didn't have to um, have my sister's. Help my sister's family. Oh, help. Help, help. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was going the route of having over. Um, so I uh, help my sister's family. family, but I was glad to family, but I was glad to. Uh, okay. So once again, this one, this phrase over here, this last dependent, uh, dependent phrase actually proves how language languages in general evolve because in the past, um, you should have said, I was glad to uh, do it. Yeah, that's uh -huh. something of the past, okay? <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, there is no need anymore. And if you go to um, grammar books from the past, you're going to see that no sentence can finish with a preposition. You have to end with a noun. Yes. Or, yeah, or a pronoun. But nowadays, it's more common for us to say, I don't want to, and, and that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because, yeah, ling the language has evolved and adapted to how we answer to some, um, to some things. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I was glad to. And the mm -hmm. reason why is because adding had to do it is redundant. And, uh, you know, the, the, the idea behind languages is that we can communicate effectively and also with a um, nice speed of, or rate of communication. So yeah, yeah, it is way better yeah. if you say, um, but I, I had to, or yeah. I was glad to, because it is more um, adapted to the new era once again. Yes. Okay, so the last one, I thought I needed to. I thought I needed to. Me you provide me? Okay, thank you, Janet. I thought I needed to go to the office today. Okay, go to the office today. But, to, but, now or today is Sunday. Okay, but today is Sunday. Hoy es el día del sol. 
All right. So I thought I needed to go to the office today, but today is Sunday. So it means that there is no need. Yeah. So you thought it was necessary, but it is not. It is not something that is necessary. Not right now. All right. So very good. Uh, I can tell that we have gotten the gist of uh, how to use, you know, this um, past models. So very good work, guys. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. Okay, so we are basically wrapping up the first week. So sad and the time is going by so quickly. It has already been five meetings, but still, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your participation in these lessons. I hope I'll see you once again this, uh, on Monday and uh, have a very good weekend. Bye-bye for yes. now, guys. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Take care. Yeah.